Well, we've got a bunch of overlapping triangles. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five triangles here. But I'm going to focus on the two large overlapping ones. I'll call this one the blue one and this one the yellow one. And let's get started to figure out these angles. I'm going to start with this blue triangle and I'm going to count up the angles. I've got a 90 here, it means there's 90 left, 40 and 20. Um, that's 60, another 30, and that makes my 90. So I've got that angle. Well, let me change my focus. I'm moving on to this yellow triangle. Got 90, and so I got 90 left. I've got 20 and 30. Well, that's 50. I need 40 more, and that's going to go right there. So in the yellow triangle, these two are going to add up. That'll be my 70 degree angle. Okay, now there's multiple ways I could go. I could solve for angle four, and I could say I've got these two angles, 20 and 30, that's 50. I've got 130 left, so I could make this my 180, sorry, my green triangle right there, the overlapping of the two, blue and yellow. Now for the angle three, the linear pair of 130, or I could look at this yellow triangle here. I've got 40, 40, 50, and 90. There's another triangle. And I could do the same thing. I could make the same argument for this uh, blue triangle over here, 40, 50, 90. Or I could just say vertical angles, vertical angles, and I could fill in for 1 and 2, 50 and 130. And there you go. You got them all. Well, in exercise 32, we have a pair of triangles here. We have this angle, which is an exterior angle. And we've got the x and the y. Well, the x is easy. Let's just, let's just look at this. Draw that in. Aha! Uh -huh. I've got parallel lines cut by the red transversal. So, these, these two angles are alternate interior angles. The parallel lines make them congruent. Easy. Now, I'm going to shade in this um, triangle up here because this is an exterior angle and it's equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. Okay, and a little bit of subtraction gives you 32 degrees. So again, these two add up to the exterior angle. That's it. Well, here we go in exercise 34. We've got overlapping triangles here. Let's solve for X and Y. Now, the way I think I'd like to do it is shade some triangles in. So we can talk about these different figures here. I'll call this the blue triangle. I've got a 25 degree angle, a Y degree, and a perpendicular sign here means that's 90. So that one's pretty self-explanatory. I'll use the corollary of theorem 4.1, which says that the two acute angles have to add up to 90. Easy enough. We solve that, and Y is 65. Okay, now let's look at the other triangle. That would be the red one here. I've got the Y, the 20, and now this is not a right angle, but this X, we're going to take that X and say that's an exterior angle. So, let's set it up like that. Okay, again with a red triangle, the exterior angle, oh, the exterior angle is the sum of the remote interior, the remote interior angles. Now we just solved for Y so we can work that out. And then, there you go. So it's not a right angle, it's 85. Well, here's another figure with overlapping triangles. And we're going to solve for the X and the Y. Well, do the same thing. I'm going to color code these. So I can talk about the yellow triangle and the blue triangle. Start with the yellow. And I'm going to say, well, right triangle. So I'll use the corollary of theorem 4.1, which says the acute angles that is, the other two angles have to add up to 90. So these two will add up to one angle, plus y must be 90. So I'll write it down like that. That's my yellow triangle. Again, that's this one. And I'll simplify that. Piece of cake. And now I've got a value for y. So now for the blue triangle. Well, I'm going to say, again, I've got a right angle here. So eight, the 18 the x and the y have to add up to 90 as well. Of course, we just solved for y. That's what makes this possible. So I'm going to <coughs> excuse me, I'll set that up same way. 
and I'll do my substitution and I can simplify and then I'm done. So there you go. 37, 35. Well, I love these radicals. We've got this, the measures of the angles of this triangle in a very funny form. Two radical 2x two degrees, five radical 2x degrees, and two radical 2x degrees. The only thing I know there is that it's isosceles. I know I've got two angles that are the same, but we're going to see more than that. Let's first add up all those angles and set them equal to 180. That satisfies part A of this multi-step problem. This problem is exercise number 49. Now, let's, um, okay, let's write this out. I'm going to write it out without the degree sign. And I'm looking at this, and I realize I've got a, these are all the like terms. The, each of these terms contains a factor of radical 2x. Because of that, I can combine the like terms. So I've got 2, 5, and 2, or 9 radical 2x's. So I've got a coefficient here. I can now divide both sides of the equation by that coefficient. Dividing out the 9, I've got radical 2x is 200. Now if you've forgotten what to do here, let me see, I got a radical, well, let me just square both sides. I square both sides of that equation, and I'm going to end up with 2x on the left side, and set that equal to 400. Okay. At this point, I can substitute in and find the value of each of these particular angles. And I know right now, I've got two angles that are 40 degrees. Because after all, the first one and the third one listed were 2 radical 2x. And then the next angle, 5 radical 2x, would be 100 degrees. So 240s are 80 plus 100, 180. So it's 180 degrees. That's a triangle, all right. And this triangle, in addition to being, well, in addition to being isosceles, which, by the way, we don't know yet, um, it is obtuse. I say we don't know. We haven't had that theorem that the two base angles make it um, isosceles. So I'm going to go with obtuse because, after all, it's got a 100 degree angle. Well, here's a somewhat abstract question, number 52 here. We've got triangle ABC as isosceles, and we're given a measure of, or a length of segment AB, and that of BC. Now, um, we don't have a picture, so we're going to draw one. There's a possible picture. It's possible that by isosceles, we mean that X is equal to 2X minus 4. And that's the picture. this is the picture that comes to mind if triangle ABC is isosceles. Well, there's also this picture. Maybe we're talking about these two sides being the same. And this is my isosceles triangle. So let's account for both of these. Okay, keep these in mind. Let me set up in the green scenario here. Again, I've got this side equal to this one. Well, I guess I could say x must be equal to 4. Now in the purple scenario, I can say the three of them must add up to 32 because after all, that is my perimeter. So I've got an x and an x and a 2x minus 4, all equal to 32. Very good. So, let's, uh, I'm getting lost here. Oh, I guess I missed one there. So I'm going to combine the terms. I've got 4x's minus 4 is 32. 4x equals 36. And I'm guessing that x equals 9. So the two possible values. I could have the green scenario where x is 4. That would be this triangle right here. And in this scenario, this triangle, x would have to be equal to 9. So, let's see how many possible values there are for x if the perimeter is 12 instead. Well, let's just look at the purple scenario here. 
Because again, we already know that for the green, x has to be 4. That's, in other words, for these two sides to be the same, x is 4. Because AC, this side could be anything. So, let's work this out. Now, ah, setting up there. I'm going to add these three sides together. This side, this side, and this side. Set it equal to 12. I'm going to simplify it right there. And then I'm going to write down, and oh, I'm going to stop right here. If 4x is 16, then x is equal to 4, I get the exact same answer. So in part b, if the perimeter of this triangle is 12, there's only one possible value of x. It must be 4, whether I've got the green diagram or whether I've got the purple diagram. 